So we've looked at static electricity. We've looked at mains electricity. So now what we're going to do is combine those two into the topic of electrical circuits. These are the learning objectives. I won't go into them in great detail. It's your job to go into the specification and see what's required and tick them off as we go. Okay, there are a number of equations involved in this topic, which you also have to be able to use. So, going back, summarizing what we did in static electricity around electrical conductors and insulators. Remember, a conductor, of electricity at least, is a material that allows electric current to flow through it easily. Therefore, all metals are conductors, so that's why we have copper in our wires. Whereas an electrical insulator has a very high resistance to the flow of electrical current. And we'll look at resistance later also in this unit. Um, so there we had, so previously uh, we've done this, uh, so copper was a great conductor, okay, rubber is an insulator, steel of course is a conductor, mercury is a conductor, plastic is a insulator, diamond is a insulator, and graphite is a conductor. That's going back over what we did with um, charge. Also, under electrical charge, we uh, looked at the charge electricity, 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 and the electric charge can either be positive or it can be negative. Okay, so in an atom, an electron has a negative charge that is the same size as the positive charge. The positive charge of an atom cancels out the negative charge of the atom, so because atoms are neutral electronically, and neutrons have no electric charge at all. Okay, so the number of electrons will equal the number of protons. So now looking at electric current, which we touched on briefly in the last unit around mains electricity, current is the rate of flow of an electric charge. Okay, and it's measured in amperes, which essentially is uh, where one coulomb, where coulomb is of course the charge, uh, passes a point of an electrical circuit in one second. Okay, and in metal conductors like the copper wires in our houses, electrons carry negative charge around the negative side of the power supply around the circuit and then back into the positive side, which you see in the diagram there. The uh, arrow showing the direction of the electrons, which is non conventional current. But we won't really touch on conventional, non conventional current yet. That will be more dealt with in electromagnetism. Okay, so there is, of course, always an equation in physics. So the first one we're going to look at is the charge current equation. So that's going to be charge is going to equal current times time. Or Q equals I times T. You can rearrange it. So current is basically Q divided by T. Or time equals the charge divided by the current. And I guess in IGCSE physics, we love them. Uh, you can put that into a equation triangle. Charge on the top and current and time on the side of the pyramid. So using the equation I've just given you, calculate the charge passing through a device when a current of 500 milliamps flows for three minutes. So pause your video now and see if you can get the correct answer. Okay, welcome back. The important aspects, of course, are the conversions required in terms of three minutes being converted to seconds and milliamps being converted to amps. So hopefully you all went through that. So we, the equation we use is Q equals I times T or charge equals current times time. So it's going to be 500 milliamps times three minutes, rearranging 0.5 amps times 180 seconds because three minutes is 180 seconds. So you should have got a charge of 90 coulombs, where C, of course, is the units for coulombs. Question 2, calculate the current flowing with a charge of 240 coulombs flows through a device in 80 seconds. Pausing the video, of course, and seeing if you're on the right track when you come back. Okay, so again, the equation we're using is around charge and time. So current equals charge divided by time. So current equals 240 divided by 80. 
so it will be 3 amps. <coughs> okay, so now you can complete the table in the next two minutes. Come back, see if you get all the correct answers. Okay, so 60 coulombs, 2 amps, the time therefore must be 30 seconds, 60 divided by 2. The current is 13 amps, the time is 5 seconds, so it must be 13 times 5, 16 co 65 coulombs, 960 coulombs in 4 minutes, where the current will be, remember to rearrange or at least convert uh, minutes into seconds, 3 amps. And 3 coulombs, 50 milliamps, the time must be 60 seconds. Remembering to, of course, convert milliamps into amps. So hopefully you got 100% there. Okay, so that was current. Uh, and now we're going to look at voltage. So a battery gives electrical charge energy. It gives it the energy, the charge, the energy uh, that it requires to do work um, in order to uh, power light bulbs, do sound systems, uh, play your iPod, whatever. Okay, so the volt of a battery equals the energy in joules provided when a charge of one coulomb passes through a battery. So if we put that in equation form, voltage equals energy divided by charge, the amount of energy on one coulomb of charge. Okay, so one volt is the same as one joule per coulomb. So question. Calculate the voltage of a battery if it supplies 300 joules of energy to 50 coulombs of charge. So pausing that video, using the equation I've just provided, you should hopefully be able to work out the voltage. Okay, so the equation is voltage equals energy divided by charge. 300 divided by 50 will give you a voltage battery, or battery voltage of 6 volts. Okay, so 300 joules on 50 charges. Okay, just like in the ampere case or current case, now pause the video and complete the following table. Okay, so this is what you should have got. 12 volts, 40 joules. The answer is going to be, of course, 480 divided by 12, 40 coulombs. 500 joules, 25 coulombs. That's going to again be 500 divided by 25, 20 volts, 6 volts is 120 joules divided by 20 coulombs, and 230 volts is going to be 69 kilojoules divided by 300 uh, coulombs. So let's just now quickly finish this um, these paragraphs or sentences with the correct words, so as a nice summary for this little part of this topic. So electric current is the rate of flow in electric, what can I use, charge. Electric charge is measured in coulombs. A battery provides electrical energy, the amount of energy provided per coulomb of electrical charge passing is equal to the voltage of the battery. The main supply gives 230 volts to every coulomb of charge. So that's kind of combining what we've done today with what we've done with mains electricity. Okay, so let's now really get into the nitty gritty of where it comes into importance in electric circuits. So an electric current will only flow if the circuit is complete and also contains some form of power supply, like a battery or a cell or a mains power supply. <laughs> and a circuit diagram uses a standard set of symbols to show how electrical components are connected together. So you have to know the symbols to use to actually represent circuits. So here are the circuit symbols you need to know. Okay, that one there is going to be a cell. That one, is, and a cell is required to push electrons around the circuit, okay, provide the energy. That there is two cells together, which is a battery, and a battery consists of two or more cells. That one there is just a simple wire, okay, and that's how the electricity uh, gets passed through in a circuit, and it should always be drawn with a pencil, with a ruler, but it needs to be a straight line. That's a junction. 
uh, and that is a switch and a switch enables the current to be turned on and off to open and close the circuit. Okay, so all of these symbols need to be learned. Next one is a light or an indicator, I guess a bulb. After the light bulb, this is used to show whether or not the circuit is on. Okay, we'll use that quite a lot. That there is a LED light bulb, okay. It's an old symbol. Uh, uh, this symbol here is the one that's now used, so we shouldn't really be using that one anymore. Okay. That there is known as an ammeter, and it uh, measures the current uh, in amps. That's a voltmeter, which measures the electrical voltage in volts. And then we have the few, no, it's a resistor, resistor, sorry, a fixed resistor. And a resistor, which we'll learn more about, is used to limit the current in the circuit. That's a variable resistor. And that is a thermistor, so that's about uh, the resistance changes depending on the temperature. And that's, yeah, there we go, decreases the temperature. And that's an LED uh, light um, resistor, uh, light dependent resistor LDR, which again, the device's resistance depends on the uh, intensity of the light. Okay, so there's different types of resistors, which we'll go into in more detail later. And we have a diode, uh, which only allows the current to flow in one direction, important for AC currents. We have a light emitting diode, LED. Uh, that's again a light only emits a light when it's, when it's going with the correct flow of current. That is a fuse, which we've seen before, designed to melt to break the circuit if the electricity current gets too high. And that is a heater, which is self explanatory, converts electrical uh, energy into heat. Okay, and that's pretty much all the symbols that we need to know. Um, in terms of electric current flow, uh, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Okay, when we get to electromagnetism, that slightly changes with the discussion around conventional current, but for electrical circuits, that's all you need to know. It goes from flow goes from positive to negative. Okay. And the longer, thinner line of the symbol for a cell is the positive terminal. Okay. Long, thin, positive. That short, negative. Okay. So in the circuit above, we have a symbol for a diode. <coughs> and it's a line, so it flows in the correct orientation because it's going to be, of course, a DC current being a cell. Right. So now... We've had a look at the different symbols and the components they represent. Now you have to fill in the table to see if you've learnt what the components actually are. So pause the video now and let's see if we can fill in this table, come back and see if we can get 100%. So welcome back. So let's go through the step by step. So the symbol with the giant A in the middle, of course, is the ammeter. Okay, what does a diode look like? It looks like this. It's kind of an arrow going in the one direction, allowing uh, current to flow only in one way. Okay, the, the circle with the cross, that's a indicator, most commonly a bulb. And a cell, of course, is only one cell. And the fat line, of course, is negative, skinny line positive. That symbol there on the right, uh, the rectangle divided up, is a heater. A resistor, of course, is a straight line with a box in the middle. And that is the next one is a thermistor. And finally, an LDR, last kind of resistor we look at. Okay, so hopefully you got 100%. 100%. Yeah. Okay. So, further questioning. Draw a circuit diagram for the torch shown below. So pause the video now. And using your knowledge of... Symbols of electrical circuits. Let's see if you can actually draw what uh, is represented a circuit diagram which represents what that torch is. Okay. So welcome back. So hopefully you should have got a diagram <coughs> similar to this. Okay, you've got your two batteries which form a cell. You've got your light emitting, or you've got your, your a bulb at the front and a side switch here. Okay, those are your three components of your circuit diagram. 
So there's two types of circuits, there's series and parallel circuits. So we'll look at series circuits first and look how their current and voltages differ. Okay, so circuit components are said to be connected in series if the same electrical current passes through each of them in turn. <coughs> okay, so there we go. So here we have a cell connected to two light bulbs in series. Okay, so as the current goes through, the current stays the same. Okay, the cell and the two lamps are in series with each other, and so the electrical current passes through uh, them is all going to be the same. So, okay, so if this is component one, this is component two, this is the supply current, uh, the supply current is going to equal the current at uh, light bulb 1 and the current at light bulb 2. Okay, the current stays the same. That's for series circuits. Okay, so in a series circuit, all the components can be controlled by just using one switch, okay, because it opens and closes the entire circuit. Okay, so they're all connected. Okay, you, you close the circuit, the lights go on, you open the circuit, the lights go off. Lights go on when you open it, I mean, when you close it. So each component shares the voltage of the power supply, and so adding more bulbs in the series will cause each bulb to become dimmer. Okay, so this is the supply voltage. This is voltage across, um, actually I might do it up here. This is the voltage across the first um, uh, light bulb, voltage across the second light bulb. So what we can say is that the voltage of the supply, Vs, will equal the voltage of 1 plus the voltage of 2, the sum. Okay. So they'll go a little bit dimmer because if you add another one, then the voltage is going to go down. Less energy is being provided to three of the bulbs. Okay. There we go. Okay. It becomes dimmer. Okay, so that was for series circuits. The other kind of circuit is a parallel circuit. So in a parallel circuit, the voltage across each component connected in parallel is going to be the same. Okay, so V supply, this is a supply voltage here, is going to equal V1, which equals V2, which equals Vx, whatever X is as a component, which equals Vy. Okay, they're all the same. The voltage is the same anywhere in the circuit. Okay, so the voltmeter reading for component X, V1, will be the same as the voltage reading for Y and V2. In a parallel circuit, all the components can be individually controlled by using different switches. Okay, so there we go. That one goes, that one goes, that one goes. If one light bulb blows, the others will still carry on working because you've still got closed circuits. <clears throat> so current in parallel circuits is not the same as currents in series circuits. The total current through the whole sum of the circuit uh, is the sum of the whole circuit is the sum of the currents through the separate components. Okay, so the supply current will equal the current at say component one plus the current of component two. As illustrated here, we have 5 amps as the supply voltage, 3 amps, okay, so this will be component 1, and this will be component 2. So the, the current uh, at, through uh, the bulb 1 will equal 3 amps, and the current going through the fuse um, is going to be 2 amps. So 2 plus 3 will equal the cur uh, current of the entire circuit, the supply current. Okay, so what are the advantages of connecting two lamps in parallel rather than series to a power supply? So when connected in parallel, the lamps are brighter than when they're connected in series. The lamps can be controlled individually by switches, and one lamp will continue working if the other one breaks. That's okay, so calculate the currents measured by ammeters A1, A2, and A3 in the circuit below. So pause the video now and see if we can get an answer. Right, so what you should have discovered, of course, is it's a uh, parallel circuit, so it's going to the current, supply current will be the sum of all the components, 
So A1 will equal 2 amps, and A2 will equal 4 amps, because 4 plus 2 equals 6, which is the supply current. And A3 will be 6 amps, coming back to the battery. So in summary, when components are connected together in series, they will have all the same current flowing through each of them. When components are connected in parallel to each other, they will have the same voltage. Lamps are usually connected in parallel to each other as this allows them to be controlled individually by switches and if one lamp blows, the others can still continue to operate. And these are some online simulations which would be quite useful when you're going through your revision and we might use them in class a bit too. Alright, so that was uh, introduction to circuits. We did mention resistance, so now we're going to go into a little bit about resistance. So resistance is the opposition of electron flow or current in a circuit. And it's an example of a resistor right there. And this device has a particular resistance, which you'll learn how to calculate through the different color coding. And that's the symbol, of course, from last lesson of resistor. And of course, like all things in physics, there is a resistance equation. Resistance equals voltage divided by current, or R equals V divided by I, where voltage, of course, is in volts, current is in amperes, and resistance is in something called the ohm. There's that funny symbol there. So also V equals IR, and I equals VR if you rearrange the equation. And again, little pyramid there for you. So how do you measure resistance? Well, you can basically measure the resistance by measuring the current through and the voltage across a component. Okay, so here we have it. We have um, a circuit which has a light bulb in it. So you can measure the current of the circuit and then the voltage across the light bulb. So question one, calculate the resistance of a lamp if the voltage of 12 volts causes the current of 3 amps to flow through the lamp. So again, pausing the video, we've just found out an equation. Now it's your turn to apply it. Okay, so resistance equals voltage divided by current, so 12 divided by 3, which will give you 4 ohms. Okay, question number two. Calculate the resistance of a heater if a voltage of 230 volts causes a current of 200 milliamps to flow through the heater. Okay, pause the video now, and let's see if we get the same answer as each other. Okay, so welcome back. Resistance, of course, is voltage divided by current. 230 volts divided by 200 milliamps. Remembering, of course, be careful. Milliamps needs to be converted into amps. So that will be 0.2 amps. So that will be 1,150 ohms. Question 3. Calculate the voltage across a resistance of 40 ohms when a current of 5 amps is flowing. Again, pause the video, see if we get the right answer together. Okay, so you should have discovered again V equals IR, which will be 5 amps times 40 ohms, which will be 200 volts. And question 4, calculate the current flowing through a wire of resistance 8 ohms when a voltage of 12 volts is connected to that wire. Right, so again, current is voltage divided by resistance, 12 divided by 8, 1.5 amps. Okay, so now just making sure you've understood completely, copy and complete the table. Pausing the video now. Right, so 20 uh, volts divided by 4 amps, going to give you 5 ohms. So 5 amps, 40 ohms, going to be 200, time, or 200 volts, 5 times 40. 300 divided by 50 will give you 6 amps, uh, 8 divided by 500 milliamps, so 0.5 amps, 16 ohms, 3,000 volts divided by uh, 20 amps gives you 150 ohms, and 4 milliamps times 30 gives you 100 kilo, kilo ohms, uh, gives you 120 volts. So again, hopefully we all got 100%. Excellent. Okay, so also something you'll be familiar with is current voltage graphs. So used to show how the current through the component changes when it changes in voltage. So the circuit opposite that can be used to get a current voltage graph of a resistor because you've got a, something called a variable resistor there. 
Okay, you can change the resistance. Remember, we have a symbol for that. Okay, so the variable resistor is used to apply a range of voltages across the resistor. Okay, and this is the kind of results we can get, which we can then plot on a graph. Okay, so for an ohmic resistor, it's going to be a linear relationship between current and voltage. Okay, that's called a Bayes-Ohm's law, okay, which is your V equals IR, so it's called an ohmic resistor. And what is the relationship between a voltage and current in an ohmic conductor? Hmm, interesting question. Something to think about. So an electric um, what have we got? resistor, or, or current, sorry. An electric current will only flow around the circuit if there is no resistance of gaps in the circuit. All components have resistance. The greater the resistance, the smaller is the current for the same applied voltage. Resistance is measured in ohms. A current voltage graph for a uh, resistor is straight line through the origin. This shows the current through the resistor is proportional to the applied voltage. Okay, so just uh, to finish up, let's look in a bit more detail at the filament lamp. You'll, if you plot a current against voltage for a filament lamp, what you will see is not a straight line relationship. Okay, as the resistance of the filament lamp increases uh, due to the fact the temperature of the filament increases. Okay, so as temperature increases, uh, the resistance in that wire increases. And if you reverse the voltage, the reverse effect is seen. Okay, so this is not an ohmic resistor, this is a non ohmic resistor. And the diode is another example of that. You put that through and look what happens there. Okay, current only flows through the, the diode in one direction. Okay, and it has a very high resistance in the reverse direction, which we see by the flat line in this part of the graph here. Whoa, crazy. Okay, and a light emitting diode emits light when electric current flows. A thermistor. Uh, the resistance of a thermistor de decreases as temperature increases. So we see uh, a linear relationship. It's an ohmic uh, resistor. Um, and you can see the difference between hot and cold. Uh, the resistance is um, higher when it's colder and lower when it's hotter. The higher temperature line, therefore, has a greater slope than the lower temperature case. And then we have the LDR, or light uh, dependent resistor, so it only get, it resists when light is present. Um, the resistance of the light dependent resistor decreases as light intensity increases. So when light comes on, the uh, circuit will begin to go. Okay, and that again is a ohmic conductor. And you can see the difference between bright light and dim light in terms of the resistance. It's a lot more resistant in dim light. Okay, so to complete this uh, little unit, uh, the resistance of a filament lamp increases when the lamp comes on and the filament rises in temperature. A diode only allows electric current to flow in one direction. The, the allowed direction is shown by the arrow on the circuit symbol. And the resistance of a thermistor decreases if the temperature is increased. The resistance of an LDR decreases if the light level is increased. And that is basically electric circuits for the course.